Scott, I'll recognize the member from Vancouver Fairview. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. In this time when British Columbians and people across Canada are becoming more cynical about politics, more alienated from government, I think one of the tools we have at our disposal to reverse that unfortunate trend, to give people back some sense that uh, we in this chamber and, and people in government are acting on their behalf, is to respect their right to information. The Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Commissioner Elizabeth Denham has expressed the strong view that the creation of records is a fundamental part of our access to information rights. The public has a right, and it's been enshrined in legislation since the early 1990s, to the free release of information about the processes and discussions through which government makes decisions on all of our behalf. It's subject to only very explicit and narrow limitations. However, the Commissioner has repeatedly, and including recently, noted that government is simply not keeping and releasing appropriate documentation. She said, we're seeing the creation of an era of oral government that leaves little trace as it erases its tracks. Ms. Denham reported out recently uh, the increase in no record responses in March 2013. This is uh, following uh, many years of slow response to freedom of information requests. In fact, uh, this government received uh, a, an F for a failing grade from the Association of Journalists in, uh, in Canada. No record is the frequent claim made by government that it just has absolutely no documents that are relevant to the request that's been made. The Commissioner's key conclusion is that in the past four years, the number of no record responses has increased from 13% in 08 and 09 to 25% in 11 and 12. The dramatic increase was helped along by a Premier's office record where the percentage went from 30 to 45% between uh, ending in 2012. This includes speaking notes, agendas, travel expenses, briefing materials, and far more information that's quite critical for people who are reviewing how government reaches its decision. That's why the Commissioner has called for a legislated duty to document that the public's right to know deserves to be supported by proactive information. Recently, the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Association reported that the U.S. Trade Representative had complained about BC's privacy laws that required information to be housed in Canada we could find, and no one could find, any records in BC of these discussions, and yet an FOI request to the American government turned up this information. When asked about it, the minister responsible brushed off this news by saying that it was a non-issue. How can this be, Honourable Speaker? Well, let's look at a directive from the current Assistant Deputy Minister of International Trade and then Special Projects Executive Director Christine Little telling staff to make email info transitory only and telling them to be sure to delete it. Transitory emails are not FOIable, but they're only meant to cover very time-limited discussions around the logistics of meeting schedules. They are not meant to throw a blanket over information to which the public has a right to access. Similarly, Honourable Speaker, recently the Commissioner pointed out that there was very little knowledge of the requirement in Section 25 by public bodies. Section 25 requires the release of information proactively when there's a threat to public health, safety, or the environment. Not only did she point out that public bodies were uh, were essentially ignorant of their requirement to release this information as demonstrated in the failure to release information about the Testalinden Dam failure, but she thought that there was a history in BC of people simply not responding to the other part of Section 25, which contemplates releasing information proactively if it's clearly in the public interest because people are interpreting this to mean that it must be of a temporarily, temporary urgent nature. She called that the Act be strengthened so that the public interest disclosure provision should not require urgent circumstances, and she recommended that legislation be amended so there's a mandatory obligation for the release of information 
proactively that is in the public interest. As the uh, head of the University of Victoria's Environmental Law Center pointed out, the most shocking thing about the commissioner's report was that ministries don't even understand their current legal requirements. Finally, Honourable Speaker, the Privacy Commissioner just last month pointed out that there is a habit in British Columbia of releasing police information checks on request by employers or volunteer groups, and she says that her investigation shows that mental health and other non-conviction information, including completely unsubstantiated allegations and charges that have not really re resulted in uh, criminal charges, is uh, routinely released and that we are on the extreme end of the disclosure spectrum compared to other jurisdictions. She called for immediate action to cease the release of information on mental health records, on suicide attempts, and unsubstantiated allegations, with the exception, she said, and I agree, of those understandable checks dealing with people who work with children or vulnerable adults, there is no evidence that the release of non-conviction information helps the hiring practice or that it increases public safety. People don't know what's in their job file. This is an inhibitor to job and volunteer applications. The commissioner said that there is a history with the people she interviewed of significant negative impact on their self-esteem, on their dignity, and even on their willingness to volunteer for volunteer organizations. Record checks that prevent citizens, she says, from obtaining work may actually result in a burden on society as a whole. So far from being the most transparent government in BC's history, as this government claimed to want to be, its actions are shrouded in secrecy, it's disrespectful of British Columbians' right to privacy, this government needs to heed the recommendations made by the Independent Privacy Commissioner and strengthen the Act. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank the member. Recognize the member for Chilliwack. Well, thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. And it uh, gives me indeed great pleasure to rise on behalf of my constituents in Chilliwack to address this morning's private member statement, Public Interest. In that respect, we are committed to ensuring that this government is open and transparent for British Columbians. Our Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act is widely recognized as having the broadest coverage in the country. BC's Freedom of Information legislation is a cornerstone of our democratic process, and it's crucial to providing accountable, accessible government. Responses to general freedom of information requests are posted to BC's Open Information website 72 hours after being released. While exercising sound fiscal management, the Ministry of Technology, Innovation, and Citizen Services and other ministries have maintained resources dedicated to freedom of information requests. To follow through on our commitments, this government is keeping funding for freedom of information stable. This year, budget of $7.9 million will remain the same as the budget for 12-13. In fiscal 2013-14, government responded to 9,832 freedom of information requests. This represents a 3% increase over the previous year. And it may interest members to know that government receives approximately six requests every single hour. In fact, in the past year, government responded to 5,234 general requests, the most ever. It is interesting to note that this was also the first year in which general requests have outpaced personal requests. And it should uh, be of interest to uh, several members in this House to know that the number of political party requests government responded to increased by 52% this year. At the same time, the number of media requests responded to was precisely the same number as the previous year. So this is evidence that the freedom of information process is serving British Columbia as well, Honourable Speaker. It's important to recognize that complex freedom of information requests can result in many, many hours of search time. The current fee structure in place under the legislation ensures that taxpayers do not have to bear the full cost of extensive FOI requests. A member of the public can ask for records relating to their personal information at no charge at all. Free estimates are provided and issued by professional public servants whose actions are guided by the legislation. Staff work with applicants to narrow the scope of their requests in order to help reduce fee estimates. 
In total, for freedom of information requests that result in fees being charged to the applicant, well, the average fee was $440. The total value of fees collected in the fiscal year 2013-14 was $78,000. So despite criticisms from the opposition that our government uses fees to discourage FOI requests, we have not raised the cost of fees since 1993, Honorable Speaker. That's because the government is committed and continues to be committed to being open and transparent. In conclusion, Honourable Speaker, the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act is designed to make public bodies more accountable to the public and to protect personal privacy through a number of measures, including providing for an independent review of decisions made under this Act. And I would like to take a moment to thank the member opposite for this opportunity to demonstrate the commitment of this government to being open and transparent. Uh, thank you so much, Honourable Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank the member. Recognize the member from Vancouver Fairview. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and thank you to the, uh, the member from Chilliwack for his comments. And uh, I appreciate that the member sincerely believes that this government is doing well, or at least better. But if that was the case, there simply wouldn't be constant commentary from the independent commissioner responsible for privacy and freedom of information, from the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Advocacy Organization. Uh, it's one thing to say, that British Columbia has the broadest possible coverage for freedom of information, and yet the Commissioner has just recently pointed out that we're on the extreme end of releasing far too much information that impinges seriously on the privacy rights of British Columbians with no good reason whatsoever, either from a hiring practice perspective or from a public safety perspective. The member has said that uh, British Columbia has uh, a higher response. And yet, the uh, Commissioner has pointed out on more than one occasion that uh, the rate of, uh, of uh, speed of response, uh, frankly, has been terrible, that the, there was a dramatic increase in the rate of no responses, which has gotten marginally better this year, but nowhere near uh, the baseline of 2008 and nowhere near the benchmark that is expected. And the reason for this is simple. We know about uh, private emails being used for uh, communication within government. We now know that there was directives explicitly from senior uh, members of the bureaucracy to simply arbitrarily uh, label information as transitory and delete it. And that is why there is such a high record of no uh, record responses, no response on record. Uh, Honorable Speaker, if there's no response, there's nothing to post. If nothing's kept, there's no information for the public, the media, and the opposition to peruse. Uh, the, the kinds of records that have not been available were critical briefing notes on high, BC Hydro rate increases, uh, information passed on to the Premier prior to her meeting with the Premier of Alberta. These are not transitory issues. They go to the very heart of the policy decisions being made. Honourable Speaker, the member talked about fees being kept at a low level. The commissioner has called for the elimination of fees because they are an inhibitor to seeking information. She's also pointed out that the centralization of record keeping has resulted in records not being properly archived and kept. So when people ask for them, there's nothing that can be handed over because it has not been properly catalogued. Honorable Speaker, I could go on and the litany goes on. But the answer to this issue is to strengthen the Act on the recommendations of the Privacy and Information Commissioner, which she has made on numerous occasions, both to allow greater access to information, to ensure documents are kept, and we, on this side of the House, would, in fact, do that. 